The movie begins with a boy named Sean. One summer, he left the big city to spend a week at his mother's childhood home with his great-aunt Sadako and the housemaid Haru. Once they arrive, he's greeted by a crow and a cat having a scrap. Meanwhile, he catches a glimpse of a tiny person running through a bush. Before he can follow the little figure, he's interrupted by his aunt calling him. As Sean leaves, we get a better look at this little fairy, Ariadne, our resourceful red-headed heroine. Although tiny, she more than makes up for it with her cheerful personality and her free-spirited attitude. As she runs back home, the cat sees her and rushes in quick pursuit. Thankfully, Ariadne is faster, so she escapes unharmed. Some grasshoppers greet her along the way, and soon enough she arrives back home. As she climbs through her room's window, her mom, Homily, calls out to her, and we find out that Ariadne had actually sneaked out to get some leaves and flowers for her room, which she likes to think of as her little garden. Although worried about her daughter's safety, Homily can't stay mad for long when she sees the bay leaf Ariadne brought for her as an early birthday gift. We now find out these little people like Ariadne and Homily are known as borrowers, because they live secretly within human houses and borrow tiny amounts of stuff from them to survive. Ariadne is excited as today is her first borrowing mission, and she can't wait to put into practice all the things she learned. Soon, Ariadne's father, a stoic man by the name of Pod, arrives home. Although Ariadne is excited to tell her father about her adventures, he interrupts her by saying that a new bean came into the house. Beans are simply what borrowers refer to humans as. Homily is shocked hearing this, before she can scold Ariadne, our heroine says that she was careful and wasn't seen. Plus, she notes how this new bean is just a child. Ariadne pleads with her mom to still let her go on her borrowing mission. Homily is against it since she knows child beans are more viscous than adult beans. But having had enough of their bickering, Pod steps in saying that child beans go to sleep early so they'll still go. Homily refutes saying it's dangerous. But Pod says that this young bean is weak and sickly so there's nothing to worry about. With this, Arietti rushes to get ready, assuring her mom that she'll bring her father home safely. While drinking tea with Pod, Homily discusses her fears that they are the last borrowers since they've had no news from others. Meanwhile, in Sean's room, Aunt Sadako tells him that the maid Haru will get him anything he needs, so he shouldn't push himself too hard because of his heart condition. Back to Arietti, after getting ready, she and her dad gear up for their mission, and soon they start their trek to the Beans house with the task of borrowing some sugar and tissue paper. Before they leave, Homily calls out to say goodbye. All of a sudden, a cockroach attacks Arietti, but she drives it away with a spoon she had in her backpack. They then continue their journey, and soon enough they make it inside the Beans' kitchen. Arietti is amazed by this huge space and the humongous furniture around her. Pod informs her that this is where Beans store their food, and the sugar they need to get is just across from where they are. After which, Pod begins his practiced routine while Ariadne watches in amazement at her father's skills. Once Pod reaches the sugar, he beckons Ariadne over. She quickly arrives, storing the sugar in her bag, and they then move to get the last item on their list, tissue paper. Along the way, Ariadne finds a pin on the floor which she decides to keep as her improvised sword. While traveling between the walls, Pod points at the rats at the bottom of the wall, telling Ariadne to be wary of them. Although our brave heroine isn't afraid, her father notes how it's better to not go looking for a fight. Soon enough, they enter a very luxurious room through a hidden passage, and Ariadne is stunned by just how beautiful and perfect every item and piece of furniture in this room is. However, Pod informs her that this is a dollhouse for human bean toys, and nothing here is for borrowing since they are not toys, and beans will instantly notice if anything here goes missing. Plus, borrowers only take essential things they need. Now in another room, which just so happens to be Sean's room, still amazed by all the new sights she's seeing, Arietti spots the tissue paper box, and they soon reach it. While preparing to pull out a tissue, Arietti turns to see a very awake Sean staring straight at her. Shocked and panicking, she pulls the tissue above herself in an attempt to hide. She then turns to her dad, nodding to confirm that she's been seen. With the worst having happened, they quickly try to leave, but in the process, Arietti forgets that her bag was still open and the sugar cube falls out hitting the ground. Sean hears this and says that they don't have to be afraid and says that he saw her before in the garden, then recalls how his mom used to tell him stories about little people living in the walls and under the floors. He asks Arietti not to go, but she and her dad have already left before he finished his sentence. Arietti can't help but sulk at having been spotted and also losing the sugar cube, but her dad tells her that everyone makes mistakes. They just have to be more careful next time. 
Still, he says they shouldn't tell her mom about this since she'll just worry to death. Pod then tells her daughter how proud he is of her, for not running away and staying calm in that situation. Back home, they make an excuse that the flashlight went out before they reached the kitchen, so they had to finish the borrowing early. Ariety then shows Homily the pin she found and heads to bed, hiding under the blanket disappointed and sad. The next day, while playing with a bug, Ariety is shocked to see Sean at the vent bringing the sugar cube she dropped last night. Using a leaf as an umbrella, she follows Sean to the patio to confirm that it was he who brought the sugar cube. Back at the vent, she thinks about taking the cube home, but hesitates. And after informing her parents about the events, they tell her that she indeed shouldn't touch the sugar. Homily also finds out that they were lying about yesterday's events. Homily thinks it's a trap for them and fears that they'll have to move now and leave their beautiful and cozy home behind. Pod calms her down, saying that nothing is set in stone just yet, and they should just enjoy their meal for now. The next day... Arietti returns to the sugar cube, and after reading the letter, she decides to return to Sean's room and give the cube back. Checking that her parents are distracted, she heads out and starts the climb to Sean's window. After reaching the roof and taking a break to rest, Arietti can't help but look at the garden below in wonder. Still, a massive crow spots her, so slightly intimidated she rushes to finish her mission and return home. Having made it to Sean's window, she drops the cube through a hole in the mosquito mesh, but before she can leave, Sean spots her and asks her to stay a bit longer, apologizing if he scared her. But Arietti responds by saying to leave them alone because they don't need his charity. Sean asks if they can at least talk, but she responds by saying that her parents said that humans are dangerous and that if they are seen, they have to move homes. Sean notes that having a family must be nice, and when Arietti questions, Sean says that he has a family as well but they sent him away to get treatment since they're never home because of their work. They then introduce themselves to each other. Sean even notes how Arietti is a very beautiful name and asks if they can be friends, or at least if he can look at Arietti, while refusing initially. After Sean promises to not hurt her, she decides to do him this small favor. Unfortunately, that massive crow that first saw Arietti charges towards her, slamming itself into the mosquito mesh and almost making Arietti fall on the ground. Seeing this, Sean instantly gets up and tries to help, while the mad crow pecks at him. After opening the window, he manages to grab Arietti before she falls. Hearing the racket, Haru comes through the door and drives the crow away with her weapon of choice, her slipper. She notes how she's never seen a crow act like that, and now she has to replace the mesh. While Sean keeps Haru occupied, Arietti manages to slip away unnoticed, leaving Sean slightly disappointed at their meeting being interrupted. While walking back home, she meets her father, who found out she went to meet the young bean, and he makes her promise to never be so reckless again. Back at their home, Pod tells Homily that it's time for them to find another home, since young Sean knows of their existence. While taking a delivery, Haru asks the postman if he knows of any pest exterminators, saying she might have a problem with tiny people, leaving the postman confused. During dinner, Sean and Aunt Sadako discuss the crow attack, asking if he's all right, to which Sean says he's doing just fine. We now find out that Sean's parents are going through a divorce. Changing the subject, Sean asks about the dollhouse in his room, and Sadako tells him that his grandpa had it custom-made because he thought that the little people living in the house would love living in it. While Sadako tells the story, Haru asks if Sean's seen any little people, but Sean casually says he hasn't seen any. Sean then asks if they can take a look, and his aunt happily agrees, so they all then go and admire the specially made dollhouse, which even has working electricity and every single appliance and object is 100% real and can be used as such, oven included. Later, Sean visits the vent where he previously left the sugar cube, leaving a note and a flower. Meanwhile, back to Arietti, she's crushing up some biscuits to use as flour. As Homily and Arietti prepare the food for her father's return, Pod arrives home after twisting his ankle, but thankfully another borrower who was introduced as Spiller had found him and helped him get home safely. While Homily panics, Arietti gets some cold water for Pod's leg. Having finished helping Pod, Spiller says that it's time for him to leave, but after Arietti asks him to stay a little longer, he agrees and they then have tea together. Homily asks if he's seen any borrowers while adventuring, and Spiller says he's seen three more. He then shows Arietti his bow, but then says he has to leave now. Plus, he already caught dinner, that being a cricket leg. 
Then he bids farewell and leaves. While returning with Spiller, Pod says that a settlement of borrowers is situated a few days away, and Spiller offers to take them there on the river leading to it. As Arietti walks Spiller to the vent, she suggests that next time he visits he can bring his family as well. But Spiller notes how he has no family. So Arietti then suggests that they can be his family, to which Spiller simply nods and climbs to the roof, then glides away epically. The next day after Sadako leaves, Sean takes the kitchen section from the dollhouse and gives it to Arietti's home, although in the process scaring Homily, Pod, and Arietti silly by removing the whole roof from their house. After giving them the lavish kitchen, he puts everything back as he found them and goes back to his room, while a suspicious Haru follows him and finds a pot he dropped from the dollhouse. As Arietti's family finishes packing all of the necessities for their journey, she heads out to meet Sean and give him the flower and the note back as well as to say goodbye to him. Sean then asks if he can turn around to look at her, to which Arietti agrees. After he does so, he can't help but note how beautiful Arietti really is. But sadly, she tells him that since they've been seen, they now have to move. After explaining to Sean what borrowers are and almost getting eaten by the cat, she says that she's only seen one other borrower so far. Sean then asks if they're afraid that their kind will disappear, which makes our little heroine shed a few tears of sadness. But she then regains composure, noting how Spiller said that there are more of them in the forest. Sean agrees that that might be true, but they'll still die at some point and sometimes you can't change the fact that you might die. Arietti asks how he can say such a horrible thing, but states her determination to fight against all odds and survive no matter what. Sean apologizes to Arietti for upsetting her and explains that he's actually the one that's going to die since he has a problem with his heart and needs to go through heart surgery, although his chances of survival are very slim. He then notes how he's always had someone else care for him, but when he saw her, he wanted to care for and to protect Arietti. But in the process, he forced them to move home, so he apologizes again. While they keep talking, Haru finds the trap door leading to Arietti's home. After opening it and lifting the roof of their tiny house, she spots Homily and captures and puts her in a glass jar with some plastic wrap covering the top. After putting Homily in the pantry, she leaves to lock Sean in his bedroom and to call the exterminators. Meanwhile, Arietti returns back home and finds her mother missing and the teapot on the floor, so she knows something bad happened. After climbing to Sean's window again, she calls to him, saying that her mom went missing and that someone removed the roof of their house again. He promises to find her mother together, but soon finds out that he's been locked in his room. With no other choice, he leaves through the window, and with Arietti's help, they open the adjacent window and head down to look for clues. After confirming that someone took homily, Sean takes the dollhouse kitchen and hides it in a bush. He then goes around the house and enters the kitchen through the back door. While he keeps Haru distracted, Arietti searches for her mom, and before long she finds her in the pantry on the shelving unit. After successfully saving Homily, the two of them then head out, while Sean looks on proudly at saving someone. Aunt Sadako and the exterminators arrive at the same time, and when she questions Haru about what's happening, the maid tells her that she finally found the little people. Meanwhile, Sean returns and takes the doll kitchen back to the dollhouse. Haru smugly takes Sadako to show her the little house she found, but thankfully Arietti's family had already moved everything and made sure to only leave a pile of trash in their place. Haru is shocked, but then takes Sadako to show her the missing dollhouse kitchen, except Sean had already put it back. Not believing her eyes, she makes one final attempt, going to take the jar she put Homily in, but when she finds it empty, she stumbles in shock and has a minor breakdown, promising she's not crazy. At night, the borrower family travels to meet up with Spiller. After stopping to take a break, Arietti apologizes to her parents for causing all this mess in the first place. And when going out to take a breath of fresh air, she meets the cat Nina once more, however. Unlike their previous meeting, Nina just stares at Arietti and then silently goes to grab Sean and lead him to her. Animals are indeed smart. While Pod and Spiller load their belongings in the teapot they've repurposed as a boat, Sean arrives and calls for Arietti to which she responds and they soon meet each other once more. But this time, sadly, is the last time they'll see each other. While she and Sean talk, Spiller notices Sean and takes aim with his bow. But after seeing how Arietti and the human being are friendly with each other, he lowers it in slight confusion. Arietti asks how he managed to find her, and Sean says Nina was the one that pointed him in the right direction, 
After Arietti thanks Nina for leading Sean to her. Sean takes out a sugar cube as a gift for his tiny friend Arietti. She then asks Sean when his surgery will happen, to which he says tomorrow, but after having met her, he's not scared anymore, since she showed him how to be brave. Arietti then gives Sean her hair clip as a token to which he will remember her, and thanks him for protecting her. After wishing him a happy life and bidding farewell, she leaves before this brave heroine of ours starts shedding even more tears for leaving the one bean friend she made. Sean resolutely states that his heart is now after meeting her, and promises to never forget Arietti even though their meeting was very brief. We find out that Sean's operation went well, and although he didn't meet Arietti again when he returned the following summer, he was happy to overhear his neighbors talking about how many things in their house went missing. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.